just going to record while you do it. Okay, so the clutch cave cover came off quite easily. Um, the surface around here is very, very clean. I dare say someone has put a new clutch in here not too long ago. Um, it came off very cleanly. What I'm also seeing, and I think this is a good thing, is this fitting here. Now, I have a feeling from a video I've seen that this is other than brand new um, this was a repair or a, a callback um, fix of BMWs I don't quote me on that yet but it looks like it's been done uh, which is a great thing so uh, but again don't quote me on that um, there was a video a very good video done by a gentleman in Australia who um, mentioned something about that so I'll go back over that this evening um, but just looking quite clean and tidy in there um, early days I am detecting possibly uh, small Fragment of something? No. Um, it all feels pretty tight. Okay, I do know that this has the single 
groove down the side of the pressure mm, pressure plate from or the clutch um, slave cylinder goes onto here and that depresses that. Um, the later model one has a double groove uh, for better oil feeding into the clutch plates. Um, okay, I'm really happy that that's looking quite clean and tidy in there. Um, and I'm going to now remove these and start removing this clutch out of there, fingers crossed. The first thing we've got is this depressing, depressing, depression, depression. Wow. Um, so this part here that um, depresses, so the, um, it's nice, smooth as, nice bearing, not, no noise at all. Um, so the uh, slave master, or the slave cylinder presses on that, which presses on this spring here, depressing the clutch um, within the basket. So that's the first thing to come out. So I've labeled that number one and put it in the bag. Pretty straightforward, but it could be a little while before I'm doing this and putting it all back together. The second part uh, had these six little Allen key head bolts. The ones here holding that around there. And that part there comes out and that retains that, I guess, compression spring. I can't remember what they call those, but basically they're a convex or convex spring. Um, so that's number two. Um, now, outer clutch spring. I'm just going to draw a. So out of clutch springy thing. That's number three to come out. thing uh, so we've got this it's a tubular well, it's round it's a round sp um, spring and that goes in next just clean that off so we'll call that number four oh, 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 oh. Uh, retaining Spring. Is that okay if I call it that? Draw a little picture. Put it in the bag. Number four. Now's where we get to the part where really we've got this big nut on here which is bigger than that uh, it's going to be 30 what's it going to be about a 30 Battery was barely charged. <laughs> Picked its butt. Thank you, Luke. So there's our tool. Knocked out pretty quick. 
uh, an evening's work. And we managed to get that off. And that'll be good enough to crank that back on and get it uh, very tight. Right. Um, I'm actually going to put this plate back on the front here uh, that I took off the other day only so it keeps the whole clutch basket together as one piece. So before we get too carried away with our surfs here, we're going to put a mark across the top of the thing. Because, just in case, yeah, hopefully, if things go well, this should just come out as one piece. Maybe. Big washer on the back, we want to keep that. Um, my plan is now, don't know, I wasn't expecting it to be that easy, so I wasn't really planning to have anything to say. Okay, I put that mark on the front there. I'm just going to mark across the top of those plates and around the back for what it's worth. Um, then I'm going to do a second mark here, two marks, and I'm just going to put a double mark on the edge of that. It's got a mark down there. Anyway, um, first thing I want to do is run the calipers over the plates on this, take it apart, have a look and check the um, thickness of those plates just to make sure they're still within spec. And um, that's probably the first thing, so excuse me, I'll just put this on the bench. look in here and see if there's anything that looks a bit untoward. Um, everything looks good. There's no, luckily so far no fragments of metal or anything in there. Um, looks clean and tidy. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think what I'll do next is actually um, drop the oil out of the engine. We'll start with a nice clean oil pan. And I'll wash that out, give it a good rinse out with some brake cleaner and stuff, degreaser, and that will um, Keep that up with the um, keep that on the bike for now. It's a tough nut to crack that one, I tell you. All right, so I'm um, going to drop the oil now. Yeah. So if ever a man brought a knife to a gunfight, it was tonight. Me with my socket set, thinking that I was going to undo something under here, and of course. BMW and all of their wisdom and quality with an 8mm Allen knife. So 8mm um, X Allen, whatever you want to call it. Nice, shiny, shiny clean. Just washed it out with brake, uh, with uh, degreaser, so no fragments in there. Give it the big clean. Some people will be saying, just get on with it, dump the oil, find out what's going on. But so many things can be found out. Um, you know, afterwards you're looking at looking at things, and um, uh, I'm no expert, so you know, I'm gonna any information that I can, you know, get from other people. Uh, someone's put some brand new fresh oil in there for us, which is nice. And I just drop the um, sump plug straight into the oil just to make sure that it's greased up for next time. And 
first thing I'm seeing is um, signs of fragments on the um, tip of it. They're very, very fine. So don't just go and wipe the, because uh, it's got a magnet in this. So don't just go and wipe it all off. We want to have a look and see what we've got. I'm expecting some, um, you know, I was expecting this. In fact, I'm expecting worse than this from what's going on. We're not, you know, it's not selecting um, fifth and sixth gear. Someone out there already has the answer to that, I know. Uh, but anyway, this is all new to me. But um, look, if you, you know, if you do this, if you do see this and you've got a comment and you know exactly what it is, then, you know, hopefully drop a comment, you know, down below because I'm just going to zoom in on that so you can have a look. See that we've got some little little hairy fragments on there. Oh, come on, focus, focus. Sorry. Anyway, here's what it is. We um we didn't come into this thinking that we had a perfect bike. We knew we had some issues, and there's parts of it hanging off there. Now, I'd be interested to know from other people, you know, is that fairly, uh, fairly bad? Is that fairly typical? You know, um, what, do you, what do you normally see? Um, and now we've got that oil out of there and it's hard to see there, but as it's running out, I could, you know, clearly see through it. So it's pretty clean. Um, just going to let that drip for a little bit and then I'm going to put the plug back in. I'm going to leave those fragments on the plug for now. Um, and we'll um, go and rip the gearbox open. And um, my understanding is from here, in order to be able to pull this gearbox out, um, we obviously need this little shaft here to be out of the way, which goes, the spline goes into the gearbox there, which means we have to uh, undo some bolts back here there's a drain plug back here so we'll drop that uh, oil as well now that we've dropped the engine oil we'll drop the um, oil out of the back of this now I think it's this one here and then when you tilt it and drop it away um, you'll be able to drain that that'll also bring the whole shaft and everything back towards the back of the bike when we um, undo this point here and pivot it back on this pivoty point here. So a um, little ways to go to um, get to where we want to get to uh, before we get to it, so to speak. So I'm going to put the um, drain plug in the back of the, in the bottom of the engine again. Then I'm going to start um, undoing some bits back here. And I've got a feeling that back wheel is going to have to come off actually. So um, let's, um, Let's get this road on the show and uh, walk on with it. So I'm going to put you on time lapse in a minute and um, I'm going to have all the fun and you get to sit back and just watch and laugh. Well, that was nice and easy. Just put them back where we know they are. Mm. 
fits. Is it ever end? So much easier if I hadn't put the camera at, like you know right where the handle needs to go. My bad. Nearly there. I could feel it. Ooh, sparkly clean oil. Can let that drain. I can see the bottom of the pan through that oil that is so clean and clear. Nothing wrong with that. Beautiful. Clutch's got a little um, O-ring on it. So I'll probably look at just freshening that. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Not leaking, that's for sure. Anyway, see so if we can get as much of this oil out as we can. And everything a good clean. This tyre is pretty shot. Um, all going to plan. We will um, light that up in the um, shed here once we put the new gearbox in, or whatever we've got to do inside. And we'll definitely dyno tune that. Um, in good enough -y fashion so um, yes we're going to do a burnout is what I mean so um, okay the next thing I need to do is removing the onboard socket cover so we've got this little uh, sockety thing here and that needs to come off. Uh, so we have two bolts, sorry just checking um, a couple of things. Uh, so by removing this we're going to expose this part here. So the next thing we're going to do is remove these couple of bolts in line with the manual which I highly recommend you get. Uh, so this is going to bore you to tears, so you're going to time-lapse for a minute. Okay, so we just removed the onboard socket cover bolts. Two different sizes. Larger one, longer one. At the top or towards the front of the bike shorter one back here. Put them in the bag. And the next thing we're going to do is remove this little plug off the back. Just a little push tab there, slide it off, put that in the bag. Job done. Next step is to remove this expansion tank. And so we've released that, that was hooked up to that front bolt, that uh, cover bolt there. And this simply has, it's going to come towards you slightly, maybe come out about 30 degrees, um, 50 mil, 2 inches. And then the front will push back towards the bike with a bit of a wiggle. And there we have it, you can see this, um, hopefully you can see this tab here that it was connected to, make it easy. So this here, just 
push it in over that so it goes in inside the bike whoops inside the bike and then pulls back towards that tab and that fits into the front of this tab here okay so it's just got that little silver tab at the front there you just pull that forward and then slide that out uh, right back to the rule book let's see what's next right it's gonna be a little bit harder to film but to remove the bazooka to remove the uh, silencer from the bike you've got the fat rear pillion pig front pig here rear pig right hand side of the bike we have this bolt here to come out and then we also have so just rolling over the top of the exhaust down where the cover was we've got this one down here okay so um, you can see that connects the main I guess um, exhaust tube through to the muffler silencer whatever you want to call it so those two to undo um, which i'm just gonna i'm gonna turn the camera off and just do that guys um, i don't think that's anything too special but um yell at me later if you really needed to see it next is we're on the left hand side of the bike and we need to remove this bolt to an to allow the rear drive the rear drive unit to drop away exposing the drive shaft so I'm just going to undo that bolt there which I've already done so there's a nut on the back of it pull that out let's watch the excitement Oops. bolt washer nut Put it back where it belongs. Can you see that? Hope so. Okay, this clip's going to drop down in the way. Can't help that. It appears that I gave a little bit of a tap with the adjustment stick. And then I found that just I've only got two hands, I'm sorry. Let's see if we can get that out of the way. Okay. Um, just just get out of the way for a minute. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put the screwdriver here. Nice big wide flat blade. Uh, just going to put that on the edge of that metal because I'm on camera. And I'm just going to gently cross the top there and across the bottom. And there we have it. Didn't take much, really didn't. Just little bits. Um, and I went from down the bottom, back to the top, on the side, down the bottom, up the top, just gently working it. And there you have it, that drops away. Uh, I did pull this little plug thing out before I thought that might have been something that needed to be done because I know better than the instructions sometimes apparently um, but no and for all of you who have done this before you're all laughing at me because it doesn't hit the ground so you don't need to worry about the towel good to know um, better to be safe than sorry right the next step in the journey and it actually says to put something through here to support it but um, I didn't, um, and I should have, apparently, but it's not going anywhere. I reckon this bolt through here is enough to hold it for now. Okay, we're back up at the front of the drive shaft where it connects to the gearbox, and I need to remove, uh, release this gator at the front. Um, It is sort of, it's showing it being released from the gearbox. So, she you guys get out of the way. Right. I know no other way but 
to dig around with a screwdriver. Gently. Very gently. Oh yeah. That's working. Big wide blade screwdriver. Okay, I need to get closer and have a bit of a look um, rather than destroy it. So I'm going to find something a little bit softer to dig around with, a bit of plastic or something. And I'll come back to you in a second and let you know what I find. Okay, uh, no, that wasn't too hard at all. Um, Ten seconds later, I just gently pushed back with this flat blade screwdriver. Not digging in, but just putting it in against the metal here and pushing straight back as I worked around. And I soon saw that it was going to be pretty straightforward, so that's that step. Okay, eventually, uh, with a little bit of wiggling and just constant pressure on it, it does come out. Gently. Okay, the front end has the spline on it that goes into the gearbox. I know, I'm just letting you know. Right. What the manual doesn't tell you is that you need to turn the clutch basket anti-clockwise, I believe, due to the arrow on here, the direction. So turning it anti-clockwise, and there's a gear up the back here. I do apologize, it's a bit hard to see. So up the back there is a gear with a little hole in it. There's one little hole that you can use and I've managed to get a 3 32nd Imperial long arm, whoops, um, little um, Allen key in there. And I had to use the Big Bertha tool on the basket just to very gently move it around. Now you get this get this wrong and um, if you're forcing this little your little key in there um, while you're turning it I pretty much guarantee you are going to snap that little sucker off so be very very careful um, I just did little sort of moving it a couple of millimeters as best I could um, until I could get that to what feels like locating in behind so I think they call it a locking pin um, and it says do not remove that while you uh, while the clutch basket is out of the bike so uh, I've got it in there locking things in place to now remove the clutch basket and I am guessing that means it should stay there until I replace it so uh, it's gonna set you up and we're gonna try and remove this basket now Piece of cake. Still got the nut on the front here. I'll take that off. Pop that out. Um, that was very, very simple. Just give you a look inside there so we can see what's going on a bit better. investigate this a bit more but uh, I'm guessing it might pay to put a little mark somewhere on that maybe just mark where the um, where the pin is so that when I come back to put that all back in gee that's clean and tidy in there isn't it uh, I noticed this is already fully extended and that to me is ever so slightly loose. Although it is coming off on the... Yep. Off. So this is the tensioner, the oil pump chain 
tensioner that I've just loosened up. Um, coming up shortly, we're going to knock this shaft from this side once I undo the... This is attached to the gearbox on the other side. Hope you can see that. Let me just get you in the frame a bit better. So I'm back on the right-hand side of the bike. Um, just released the oil chain tensioner guide thingy. So that's now slack. What I want to do is take this off. Easier said than done. I mean, what am I doing wrong, guys? If I remove this bottom bolt all the way, it doesn't say to do this, but if I do, top one as well. Okay. Now that chain, just so you know, comes up through there. I know it's pretty logical, but just in case. I'm just going to be mindful of that. Two different length bolts. Short one at the top. Long one at the bottom of the guide. Like so. Hope you can see that. Long bolt at the bottom, short at the top. Hopefully. There's our um, little gear, runs inside that chain. That chain's going to drop down shortly. Now, just something you need to know about, there is a little needle bearing that goes in the back of this. Okay. Don't leave it behind. It goes all the way through, but just get that in mind. Now, I'm going to leave that chain there at the moment, but when the shaft comes out, it's going to drop down, so just got to be um, careful of that. Okay, just before I take the bolts out of the other side, we're back on the right-hand side of the bike here, in behind this chain, so right at the back, the shaft was this washer. That needs to come out. Now, just stare at the engine for a second. Next step is to remove uh, gearbox bolts. So we are looking at, and I'm holding the torch in my mouth, we are looking at um, one, two, eight of them somewhere. So we're going to do a bit of exploratory work in here to find eight bolts. So there's one tucked over the back, way up here. And there's one, two, three. Should be another one down in behind some pipe work over here. Out of the way, use. One, two, three. I believe there might be one tucked up in behind here yeah, somewhere. There he is. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, tucked up in there. So one, one there. It's 
So coming back, give you a good view. One tucked in there. And then we've got one tucked up in behind there. Behind this wiring, we'll just have to find a way of getting in there. So that's number two, three, and four. This one's very quite easy to see. This one's easy to get to. And down underneath, we have another one. Okay, bear with me. Sorry. Only born with two hands and two arms. all I can see to show you. Alright, so we're now down. Uh, got one here. And got another one. Strategically placed hidden up behind here. Behind this hose. Another one there. And there you go, just sneaking up the top there behind the hose again is the last one up the top there. So, whoops, one, two, shoot it. And further up, there's another one just in behind that hose again. So, just pull that hose out of the way, I'd say. So, gives you an idea uh, what you're looking for. Not these ones at the front that I'm looking at right here, they're sort of tucked around the back. So I'm going to tackle those, come back to you in a second. Alright, I found the culprit. There is one more bolt and I went back and had a look and it's tucked in behind the, the rubber boot at the front that joins the main shaft to the gearbox. The only way I can get in there, because my um, tools have not arrived yet, is a 730, 732nd 7-32 um, Allen key, long Allen key, and I had to get in there. I know it's not right guys, but hey, it's the weekend, I've got things to do. I checked it in one of the other bolts and I just gently applied some pressure and I didn't give it heat and there it is it's caught it's down the bottom there somewhere uh, right not ideal but it fits in there nice and snug okay and it does work as long as it's not over over tight uh, but Anyway, it's undone that bolt. There's the last one. That was why it wasn't coming out. Okay. I now invite you to watch the removal of a gearbox. Now that I have all the bolts out. All going well. I'm going to tap on the shaft on the other side. And there's going to be movement in this side. And there it is. Okay. Right. All going well, I'll be able to remove said gearbox. I'm just going to move you back a bit. Got a few things that are trying to slow us down here. Tubes and wires and things are just nice and gentle. And we have a gearbox. And I'm going to take it over to the bench and see what we've got going on. And why we can't get fifth and sixth gear. And 
for those of you who wanted to have a look what it looks like once the gearbox is out. The bike's lighter. Hope that helps guys.